nobody can excel in life constantly, correctly to the end of their life without operating on that of their open levels. Service to God is the advantage for the disadvantage. city we thank you for our nation we thank you now lord i ask that you have your way do what only you can do lord i pray that your presence that is already here oh lord let it be followed by divine presence that you will begin to give to everyone here let no one remain the same after this program it is called impact conference lord i pray that you will make indelible impact you will make indelible impact, unstoppable impact, indubitable impact in the life of every one of us here. Take all the glory, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Wow. Let somebody say, Wow. Awesome God. Shout, Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I know great things have been happening to you. Something greater is about to happen to you. And that is because you have come to the presence of a great God who does great things. Now give them a high five and tell them I receive it. Amen. Praise God. Please join me to appreciate and celebrate our senior pastor in the house and his beloved wife, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Michael Olanion. We celebrate you, Pastor Bumi. We celebrate you. Thank you so much. We love you. My wife and I are grateful for the privilege given to me to be part of the great work that God is doing here. And we will see greater works in the name of Jesus Christ. I celebrate all the assisting pastors and ministers. Your hands will never be weak. God will reward the labor of your love. As you are lifting up the hands of the man of God in the house, your hands too will never come down. In the name of Jesus Christ. All my fellow pastors uh, here, we celebrate you too. And my fellow workers, God bless you. My brothers and sisters, you are welcome to the best place to be at this time. Do you agree with me? Glory be to God. Amen. And please join me also to celebrate the anointed woman of God. Amen. Minister Lillian, energy. We celebrate you. Wow. More grace. Without any doubt. You brought heavens down. Amazing. Wow. If you know the conversation going on between my wife and I, 
you'll be amazed. I did a couple of quick video clips that I sent to my wife. <laughs> I won't tell you what I wrote there when I sent it to my wife. <laughs> and I won't tell you I replied. But that's to tell you that even beyond America, your ministration is blessing my wife in London. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Praise God. Amen. So I don't know where you live, but I hope when you leave this place, you will come to London. <laughs> Amen. Oh, you want her here? <laughs> okay, at least the fact that you said yes, I mean, that's evidence that she doesn't live here in this city. <laughs> you forgot that I'm a lawyer. So <laughs> I, got, I got you there. <laughs> so at least I've established that fact. She doesn't live here. So uh, we can talk about change of residence. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, uh, we will try and uh, have her for about uh, 10 years in London. And then she can come to America if you still want her by that time. Praise the name of the Lord. Anyway, we'll have a conversation after the service. Glory to God. Esther chapter 2. Esther chapter 2. I know that we've had a great time. You know, I just wish I can just pronounce blessings. We anoint us with oil and we go. But your pastor is a great Oliver Twist man of God. He wanted to draw everything out of me. Amen. Even for God that I've not eaten since Thursday. He still wanted me to come and minister to the workers this morning. I said, leave that till another time, man of God. This man of God, wow. You are blessed to have him as a pastor. He desires above and beyond expectations for you. Amen. And my prayer is that God will even exceed his beyond and above expectations for every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Esther chapter 2, 16 and 17. Esther chapter 2, 16 and 17. Can I get us to pray a little bit? Is that all right? So if you don't mind, will you kindly rise on your feet? We've worshipped God so much that I believe what will be most pleasing to the Lord is for you to fill up that blank check that he has given you and ask, what do you want him to do for you? Esther chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Can we read it together, please? One, two, go. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus into his royal palace in the tenth month, which is the month of Tebed, in the seventh year of his reign. The king, verse 17, the king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight, more than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Which month was Esther taken before the king? The tenth month. And some things happened to Esther when she was taken before the king in the tenth month. Five things happened to Esther. No wonder she obtained grace and favor. Number one, in the tenth month that Esther appeared before the king, her story turned to glory. In this tenth month, somebody's story will turn to glory. Number two, our shame turned to fame. The shame of being an orphan, the shame of being a captive in a foreign land turned to fame. She became famous from the tenth month. Number three, our disgrace turned to grace. If she had ever suffered disgrace and rejection, the only alien the only foreigner amongst other 125 virgins that contested to become queen in a nation where she was never born into. Her disgrace amongst her colleagues, her fellow competitors who have looked at her and said, where are you coming from? You don't even have the accent of this nation. You are not even fluent in the language of the nation. 
Who are you that you are contesting? That tenth month, disgrace turned to grace for her. That will be the portion of somebody this month. That tenth month, number four, her problem turned to promotion. Whatever problem she's ever experienced in life, promotion located her in the tenth month. There are ten people saying a loud they may hear before the end of this month. That problem of yours will turn to promotion for you. And number five, in the tenth month, Esther's labor turned to vivo. That will be the testimony of somebody this month. If that one is you, lay your right hand on your head and roar this prayer loud and clear because there is only one tenth month in a year and this one must not pass you by. One of the last songs that my sister led us in singing was Pass me not, O gentle Savior. I believe the angel of the tenth month is going about now wanting to deliver that tenth month miracle. You will not miss your own. Amen. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. This tenth month turn my story to glory. Turn my shame to fame. Turn my disgrace to grace. Turn my problems to promotion. And turn my labor to favor. My father, my father, this tenth month, turn my story to glory. Turn my shame to fame. Turn my disgrace to grace. Turn my problems to promotion. And turn my labor to favor. In the name of Jesus, prayer. Nengelebo shatali avarazkat netuka palibre neketeya inno zopre neketeri avarazketeya netuka la balige de remokoshanta endo libra nekedes irushka tavalande remokotoya etuzali avaruzkata etuka palande remokoshata ne surivan ne lebre neketori avarazkataya Oh Lord, my God, in this tenth month. I beseech you, my Father, my God, turn our story to glory, turn our shame to fame, turn our disgrace to grace, turn every problem to promotion. You did it for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You turned their problem to promotion. You did it for Daniel. You did it for Esther. You did it for Mordecai. Do it here today, O God. Everyone that came here with one problem or the other, turn things around. Let problem become promotion. Let labor be done to favor. Flavor the life of your people with favor. Oil of favor, oil of favor. Maledo remo kotoya. Ebra kasanta. Edulia varaj katayane. Ekuta balibre nekete. Ezune le mono remo koshataya. Levra nekete remo kotolia barus kataya. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let your amen roar like thunder. Stretch forth your hands towards the altar. I join my faith with yours on this altar. In this tenth month, your detained miracles will become delivered miracles. Your delayed miracle will become delivered miracles. In the name of Jesus. Ten is a number of double grace. I pray for you on this altar. For every trouble you have ever experienced. Before this month is over. Receive the compensation of double honor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Quarter to the end of year 2024. Quarter to your breakthrough. You will not break down. No member of your family will break down. In the name of Jesus. It is written, Psalm 106 verse 4. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor, with the favor that you have towards your people. Oh, visit me with your salvation. I pray for you in this season of ember that we are in. October, November, December. God will remember you. 
You will remember your family members. You will remember your church. God will remember your city. He will visit you with favor. God will visit you with favor. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you on this altar. Genesis 8 verse 5. Genesis 8 verse 5. And the waters decrease continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, the tops of the mountains were seen. Hasulia, Maline Remoko Shata, Lesuriava. That flood of problems will not increase in your life. It will not increase in your city. It will not increase in the nation. In the name of Jesus, those flood of problems in your life will dry up this month. As it did in the days of Noah, it will dry up in this tenth month. In the name of Jesus, it is written that on the tenth month, the tops of the mountain were seen. Ah, Maliberi Koshantaya wa Borioke Shuroya. You will see the top of that mountain. In the name of Jesus, you will rise above the mountains, beyond the mountains. You will rise above the obstacles, beyond the obstacles. You will rise above the barriers, beyond the barriers. In the name of Jesus, you will have dominion. To see the top of the mountain is to have dominion. Receive your dominion beyond expectations, above expectations. In the name of Jesus, you will rise, you will shine. Your family members will rise and shine. Your glory will be seen. Your talent will be seen. Your potential will be seen. Globally, you will be celebrated. Globally, you will be acknowledged. After the order of Esther, become a global icon. Become a global phenomenon. In the name of Jesus, your gift shall make room for you. Before kings and queens, after the order of Esther, in this tenth month, I command doors to open for your gift, for your talent, for your resume, for your ministry, for your calling. Doors be open for this church. Doors be open for souls to come in in their multitudes. Doors open unto your businesses for clients to come in, for customers to flood in. In the name of Jesus, doors be open unto your career, unto your professions, unto your callings, unto your ministries, unto your academics. Doors of lifting, doors of promotion, doors of enlargement, doors of settlement. Open for you by fire. Open for you by fire. Open for you by favor. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done. Shake hands with three people. Tell them it is done. Please be seated. God bless you. Let's be seated. Thank you. Amen. It's a special program. And when God puts special programs together, it is because he has special miracles to give his people. The Bible says God performs special miracles by the hand of Paul. So when you have special programs, expect not ordinary miracles, but special miracles. And so I'm confident that there is somebody here who will never forget this conference quickly. Because your testimony of that special miracle will be tied to this conference. And God alone will take the glory for it. Genesis 26, 12 to 15. Genesis 26, 12 to 15. 
I encourage you not to be in a hurry. I'll try not to make the sermon long because we are going to be anointing everyone with the oil of vivor. Is the month, month of vivor, the season of vivor, your labor has turned to vivor. My general overseer has prayed on the oil before I came. And so we are here to tap from the anointing of our Father in the Lord. And that anointing will work wonders in Jesus' name. I woke up this morning to a testimony. About this time tomorrow, somebody here will wake up to a testimony. That person is you. You will wake up to testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm trying to see if I can get what I woke up to. Glory to God. Anyway, bottom line, the person said three weeks ago when our general seer came to the UK, the lady who is a pastor called me that a sister was diagnosed with cancer and it was at advanced stage already she asked if the geo will be will be able to pray for her her father in the lord i said by all means i spoke to daddy they brought the lady down to our redemption camp in the uk where daddy was at the time Daddy Gio laid hands on her and prayed for her. The pastor sent me a testimony this morning that three weeks after, the woman is cancer free. In the name of Jesus Christ, as pastor prophesied earlier, you are sickness free from today. The same hand that was laid on that woman it was the same day that I asked daddy to lay hands on this, my bottle of oil, and pray on it, telling him that I'll be ministering in about four churches in the U.S. this month, and that everywhere I go, I would love to conduct anointing service. And daddy prayed that everyone whose head is anointed with this oil we have major testimony before the end of the year. The good news is that before you are saying your amen, I said my amen that day on my knees. And I can tell you that I'm already receiving the miracle. Some of you, before I leave this city, I will hear your testimony. So if you can't, please try not to be in a hurry. Because we will get there and won't, it won't be long. Genesis 26, 12 to 15. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father... The Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. Our theme is above and beyond expectations. And if you want to give this sub-theme or this topic or this sermon a topic, you can call it No More Limits. Tell yourself No More Limits. Holy Spirit, breathe on your words. And please confirm the preaching of your words with signs and wonders. Take all the glory, my Father, in Jesus' name. 
above and beyond expectations actually mean many things. And one of the things that it could mean is that it is to live beyond limitation. To live beyond limitations. So when you say no more limits, you are saying in effect that nothing will stop you, nothing will limit you from living or experiencing your destiny above and beyond every expectation. And God has a plan for us. And that's indeed his plans. You either fulfill it or you don't. Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, my plans for you, my expectations for you, my desire for you is not of evil. What I think about you, my package for you, the details that I have in mind for you is not of evil. But there are details, there are plans, expectations of peace to give you a future and a hope. One translation says, to prosper you and to bless you. Another one says, to give you an expected end. And God's expected end for you and I is glorious. God's expected end for you and I is above and beyond. And I pray today, that that divine expectation concerning your destiny shall never be cut short. In the name of Jesus. In Genesis 12, 2, Genesis 12, 2, he told Abraham, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. In Psalm 87, 3, Psalm 87, 3, he says, glorious things are spoken of you. O city of God, you are that city of God. You are that Zion of God. You are that daughter of God. You are that son of God. Thus say the Lord, glorious things are spoken of you. In the name of Jesus, there is power of life and death in the tongue. The tongue that has spoken glorious things of you. In the name that is above all other names, those glorious things will manifest. I say you will manifest glorious things. Say it to yourself, I will manifest glorious things in the name of Jesus. However, there is a spirit of limitation at work, except it is dealt with. The average remains average. The good remains good and never becomes great. Except limitation in life is dealt with, it becomes difficult, if not impossible, to live above and beyond expectation. But today, Say with me, no more limits. What is limitation? Number one, limitation is a spiritual condition with physical implications. What is limitation? Two, a limited man or woman is a restricted person. One who suffers in the midst of plenty. I pray for somebody, you will not suffer in the midst of plenty. America is a land of plenty. Plenty of land, plenty of everything. Look around you, not what's out, you see plenteousness. It is an abomination for anyone to suffer in the midst of plenty. If that is happening, a spirit of limitation is at work. And such a person cannot live. Even within means, not to talk of living above and beyond expectation. He can't live, she can't live within expectation. Not to talk of above and beyond. What is limitation? How do we describe, how does it operate? Three, a limited destiny cannot grow beyond the limit that is set by the enemy. Genesis 49, 3 and 4. Genesis 49, 3 and 4. Jacob, Israel, gathered together his sons. He said, let me bless you and tell you what will happen to you in future. And he called his, own, his firstborn. After he had spoken some good things about his firstborn, you are my firstborn. Reuben said, yes, daddy, you are correct. My might and beginning of my strength, Reuben said, go on, son, papa, you are right. Oh, the excellency of dignity. Ah, Reuben said, that's me you are talking about, daddy. The excellency of power, Reuben said, daddy, you got it correct, 100%. Then verse 4, daddy made a U-turn. Every satanic U-turn assigned to truncate your destiny, I command it to be destroyed. That you turn will not take place. If it has taken place already, God will turn around the U-turn to redecorate your destiny. 
Papa made a U-turn in verse 4. Hey, unstable as water. Reuben said, where are you going, daddy? And then daddy blew it up completely. He said, you shall not excel. Because he committed a sin, slept with one of his father's concubines. You shall not excel. And from that day, sir, ma, a bar, a limit was placed upon the destiny of Reuben. Reuben never is there. His own brothers overtook him. His own brothers began to perform better than him. His junior brothers began to tower well above him. Judah came forth. Blessings of first, firstborn went to Joseph. And Reuben was placed in the background because a cause of limitation have been put upon him. He was worse than that. The families of the tribe of Reuben were no longer living long. They were dying at their prime because Papa had said they will not excel. If they are getting to the point of excelling, something will happen. Either their life is cut short, they will die. Until thousands of years later, maybe 2,000 years later, when Prophet Moses came, and Moses, it was time for him to go. He gathered together the children of Israel. Fast forward to Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy 33. He gathered the sons of Israel again. He said, let me pronounce blessings to you, upon you concerning your future. And then, of course, he started with the firstborn. Reuben again. Deuteronomy 33, verse 6. I think it's in verse 6 that he spoke about Reuben. The only thing Prophet Moses could say about Reuben. He said, Lord, let Reuben live and not die. Let him live and not die. No, let his men be few. Let not his men be few. His men are getting fewer and fewer. The tribe of Reuben might be wiped off the map of the world. Oh Lord, let Reuben live. Don't let him die anymore. Papa Reuben that committed the crime died more than 2,000 years ago. But the descendants of Reuben, were, they, they were falling. They were in trouble. They were not excelling. Generation, a genetic transfer of the spirit of limitation had gone to the descendants of Reuben. The Reuben that they are talking about here was not the one that they caused. But they were the descendants of Reuben. It was Moses that came to reverse the cause. No other blessing could be pronounced. Because if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? You cannot put something upon nothing. Read about the other tribes in Deuteronomy chapter 33. Moses pronounced heavy, heavy, heavy loaded blessings on the other tribes. But on Reuben, the only thing Moses could say is that let us remove let us remove the kokoroton jeiba. Let us remove the foundational problem over this man, over this tribe of Reuben. And then maybe other blessings will rest on it. Ah, I pray for you here, particularly anyone that is of African descent, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every generational barrier, every ancestral limitation, that has been placed upon your destiny, known or unknown to you, I command it lifted up today. Let the oil today, the anointing oil, may it destroy every foundational yoke that anyone here may be experiencing, known or unknown to you. A father looked at his son and said to his son, you, you only, you cannot amount to anything in life. And those words began to operate in the life of that child. He grew up to become an adult. Had the potential and ability, gift and talent to succeed. But he was struggling. He struggled for many years. Until he ran to God. Gave his life to Jesus. Became committed. Ardent, fervent worker in the house of the Lord. The cause was broken. To the glory of God. This man, his destiny was restored. He broke through in life. 
The father that caused him and said he won't amount to anything. He built a house for that father at the redemption city in Nigeria. It was Daddy Gio that went to dedicate the house. When he went to Daddy and said, Daddy, please invite my parents. I've built a house for them. The same Baba that said I won't amount to anything. But I didn't tell them I wanted to be a surprise. So Daddy invited them. The parents came to the camp and Daddy said, we are going somewhere. They took them to the house that the son just built. And daddy brought out the keys. Daddy prayed over the place and handed the keys to the father and said, this is the house your son has built for you and mama. Papa collapsed and fainted. They had to pray to bring him back. He remembered that this was the same guy that he caused. In the name of Jesus Christ, every known and unknown cause of limitation, every known and unknown cause every visible or invisible cause of limitation operating in anyone's life here or in anyone known to you i hereby reverse it i say in the name of the god of adeboe it is reversed it is reversed no more limits in the name of jesus shout it no more limits limitation can hinder the victim desire and destination to greatness Limitation can hamper your desire to live above and beyond limits. Through their hatred, bitterness, animosity, conspiracy, jealousy, and envy, Joseph's brothers placed a barrier of limitation upon his destiny. And that limitation operated over Joseph for 13 good years. For 13 years, he was struggling. From the pit to Potiphar's captivity as a slave, and from Potiphar's captivity to the prison, 13 years of struggle as a result of the limitation placed on him from his father's house. But glory be to God. The anointing of the Lord, the anointing of favor came upon Joseph and that limitation was broken. What he suffered for for 13 years. In one day, God gave Joseph 13 miracles. In one day, he received 13 miracles as compensation for 13 years of struggle. Study chapter, Genesis chapters 40 and 41. One by one, what happened to Joseph in one day? He woke up a prisoner and he slept a prime minister. He woke up in prison garment and he slept in royal garment. He woke up a single brother and he slept a married man. He woke up on Legedis Benz and he rode before he went to bed in the second limousine of the king. You know in America, there are at least two limo, massive limo that works with the president, isn't it? It did not start with America. It has been there from the days of old. The Bible said the second best vehicle that belonged to the king was what Joseph rode in. In one day, 13 miracles, he woke up as a known entity. He slept as a celebrity. He woke up as a nobody. He slept... Not just as prime minister, he slept as the minister for agriculture. He slept the same day as minister for economy, economics development. He slept as minister for finance. He slept as minister for steel and technology. He slept, he slept as minister for planning, strategic planning of one nation. Multiple portfolios in his hand. He woke up with one name called Joseph. He slept with another name. They gave him a new name. And I can go on and on to list 13 miracles in one day. I don't know somebody here for your years of struggle, for your years of waiting, for your years of hectares get up, for your years of unsettlement in the land. In Katolia Varus Kata, Melute Branahike Kutoria Makashata. For every year of abnormal struggle, may God compensate you with 12 miracles, with 12 breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your eyes and say, Father, fast forward my breakthrough beyond every expectation. Fast forward my breakthroughs beyond expectations. In the name of Jesus. No more limits. Limitation is a destiny destroyer. It's a destiny exchanger. Limitation spirit is a destiny robber. It's a destiny substituter. Ecclesiastes 10.7. Ecclesiastes 10.7. It says, I have seen servants on horses 
Why princes walk on the ground like servants? Somebody say abomination. See, I reject it. Well, so that, that I reject it. Servants on horses. Princes walking on the ground like servants. That's limitation spirit. And it's not just a cliche. The story is there in the Bible. Second Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9. Ziba was a servant. He was supposed to be a servant of Mephibosheth. But destiny had been manipulated in life of Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan. Mephibosheth, the lame guy, a prince, was now in Lodeba, sentenced in Lodeba in a land of reproach where there was no pasture. Meanwhile, his servant, the one that is supposed to be serving him, was living in the palace. He was living in the palace with 10 wives and some 20 something children. Riding on the horses that belonged to Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth was walking on barefooted in Lodeba. Servants on horses, princes walking on the ground like servants. Until the oil of loving kindness, until the oil of favor finally located Mephibosheth through David. When David said in 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1, Is there anyone remaining in the house of Jonathan? that I may show the favor, the kindness, the graciousness of God to, for the sake of Jonathan, my friend. And one Ziba servant, Ziba came for us. Hey, there is one, his name is Mephibosheth. But, sir, O king, is lame on both feet. Talo B about his physical condition. Ziba introduced the disability of Mephibosheth. Why? So that the king will not even think about bringing him to the palace. Because it is against the law and custom to bring the lame to Jerusalem. But David said, as long as I sit on this throne, I overrule every law. Where God is not allowed to rule concerning your destiny, I come as a messenger of the cross. I overrule it today. I say I overrule it today. I overrule it today. Every law of the land, every policy of the land, every culture of the land, every usage of the land that says you will not do, have dominion, that says you will not live beyond and above expectations. I overrule it. I say I overrule it. I say I overrule it. We are Jehovah God is not allowed to rule in the life of any child of God here. I overrule it now. In business, I overrule them. In your finances, I overrule them. In your marriages where they don't want God to rule, I overrule them. In the life of your children where they don't want God to rule, I overrule them. Concerning your age where they don't want God to rule, I overrule them today. In the name of Jesus. He said, overturn, overturn, overturn. Until the one that has the right comes to take it. Mephibosheth came and he took his horses of dominion. Today in the name of Jesus Christ. You are going to pray. Lift up your hand. If I rise up on your feet, if you don't mind. I want you to pray with holy anger. You may not see this happening to you physically, but it's happening spiritually. Many of the physical problems that you are going through, they are manifestation of things that have been demonically settled in the spirit. Say, every ziba riding my horse of dominion, I overthrow you by fire. I claim back my horse of dominion. In the name of Jesus, pray, 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 pray. Kurande le mokotoya, nezuka pali gedeya, le vraga de boroko shata, ento lo mondo li bregede, etuka pala brandeya, etuka zavrana makuto ya, ete le mokoshanda, embro dozo ento li bregede ya, la duka pali gedeya, eto kete le brona mokoto, uzukeria varasante ya. I take back my horse of dominion. I take back my house of dominion. Etulia Varazandia. Etuke Polo Brenegede. E Kuka Palabrande Gedele Mokotoya. A Lugande Remokoshata. E Brendo Zonto Lobre Negede. Etuka Palabra Gadea. A Luca da Barande Remokoshantaya. E Zute de Gedebo. Le Branaka de Lebrono Mokotolia Barakande Lebo Sotoya. Oya Laboshata Livra. Every Ziba. Riding the horse of my dominion, I overthrow you. I overthrow you. I overthrow you. I claim back my head 
claim back your health, claim back your joy, claim back your peace, claim back, claim back everything that God had proposed for you. God says, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospered. God's plans for you are not little plans, they are not small plans. Every ziba belittling the plan of God for your life, every ziba attacking your glorious destiny as a prince of the most high God, as a princess of the most high God, we overrule that ziba, we overthrow that ziba today. Every law of the land, every policy of the land, every regulation that does not align with the fulfillment of God's plan and purpose for your life. I overrule them. I overrule them. I overrule them. We reverse them. Let the irreversible be reversed. Masuliaba. Enoromoshata. Etokapala bragadele borokotoya. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please be seated. Some are limited by their past. Their past experiences. They are past failures. They are past errors and mistakes. Even when they have been forgiven, the past record is still speaking against them. Limitation is a spirit of Egypt. Pharaoh said to the children of Israel, Exodus 8, 28, Exodus 8, 28, Pharaoh said to them, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Am I going? Only you shall not go very far Away. Tell somebody, na lie. Nah. I will go very far. Look at your neighbor. I bought to I bought to you. Say, I will go very far. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. In life, you will go very far. In your career, you will go very far. In that marriage, you will go very far. In your destiny project, you will go very far. In ministry, you will go very far. In the academic attainment, you will go very far. To go very far is to attain the apex and the pinnacle of your profession. You will go very far in the name of Jesus. To go very far is to live a long, fulfilled life. You will go very far. You will go very far. You will go very far. I say you will go very far. To go very far is to break every limitation. You will go very far. To go very far is to live beyond and above. You will go very, very far very very far to go very far is to go beyond the reach of your enemies in the name of jesus they will not catch up with you they will not meet with you stop on pursuers will not catch up with you they will not meet with you they will return to the ascender they will return frustrated they will return in failure shout it five times i will go very far in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus. One more time. In Jesus' name. He said they will not go very far. No wonder. Because when Pharaoh said that, saw, not with ordinary mouth. His mouth was loaded with charms when he was saying so. No wonder, by the time the children of Israel got to the wilderness, the voice of Pharaoh began to speak to them. From time to time, they were remembering Egypt and they were fighting Moses, saying to Moses, Why did you bring us to the wilderness? Why did you bring us here? Eh? Why? Why? Numbers 11 5. Numbers 11 5. Look at this. Look at look, look at these people. Bewitchment. This is the spirit of bewitchment, you know. We remember the fish which we ate freely in Niji. They were in slavery for 400 years. Look at what they are saying. We remember. Oh, do you remember Oshi? You will not remember poverty. You will not remember slavery. You will not remember barrenness. You will not remember servitude. In the name of Jesus. We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Eh? With all that God did to deliver these people. The spirit of limitation, the witchcraft of limitation had been programmed into their destiny. And their limitation became the limitation of God. If you limit yourself or you allow limitation to limit you, unbeknown to you, you are limiting the limitless God. 
Why do I say so? But to when God was tired of them, look at what God said in Psalm 78, verse 41. Psalm 78, verse 41. God said, Yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the only one of Israel. Say, Father, I will not limit you. Father, if I have limited you in any way in my life, I repent today. Never again will I limit my God. My God is limitless. Therefore, I am limitless in what I can do and achieve in life. May God blot out every memory of that ugly past from you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I believe that God is willing to do so. He says in Isaiah 54 verse 4, Isaiah 54 verse 4, For you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. In the name of Jesus, poverty will become history that you will not remember again in your family tree. A woman waited for many years in barrenness before finally God visited her and she delivered the baby boy. When the baby was being named, a prophet came. And the prophet looked at the baby and the prophet said, Ah, what a mighty child. Ah, what a great child this baby is. Ah, this is a destiny-loaded child. Ah, this child will grow great. This child will travel around the world. I see greatness in this child. He will travel around the world. Mama said, No, prophet. No, this one will not travel anywhere. No. Bro, man of God, don't you know how long we waited? She said it innocently. Don't you know how long we waited to have this child? And to come and travel, Kiri. And you want him to be traveling around? We waited for many years. Ah, this one, no. We will keep this one. Lo and behold, heaven rubber stamp what mama said. The demonic supernatural took it up. And a negative mark was put on the destiny of that child. That child truly remained homo. That child remained home to the point that he started primary school at age 16. That child remained home. So today, by the time Waek came, he did Waek five times and failed five times. Until he finally encountered Jesus. And the oil of favor, like he's coming upon your head today, came upon his head. Today, I have good news. That child, of course, a full-grown man now, in fact, almost a grandfather now, he lives here in America, and he has traveled more than 86 countries of the world. God restored his glory. God restored his destiny. He lived above and beyond again. In the name of Jesus, ah, you will sprout again. God will restore your glory. He will restore your destiny. He will restore your virtue. He will restore your dominion. He will restore your greatness. I say God will restore your glory. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says God is about to restore the glory of Jacob. Which the emptiers had emptied. Every glory that has been in the warehouse of the emptier. All these years in this assembly. We recover your glory back. Receive your glory back. Let that glory be restored back to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every arrow of limitation fired at you. I command it to go back to the center. Oh God, let me round up. We leave the rest for another day. How do I break the yoke of limitation? Let me jump a bit because of time. Number one, surrender your life to Jesus. He is the restorer. John 10.10 10, The thief has come to do nothing else but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Give God your heart and he will give you the heart. Give God your H-E-A-R-T and God will give you the E-A-R-T-H. Why? He says in Psalm 115 verse 16, the heaven, even the heavens are the laws, but the heart he has given to the children of men. You will command this heart. You will control the art. You will have dominion in the art. And you will inherit eternal life. You are here a good amen to that. You will not walk on the surface of this earth as a Mr. Nobody. You will not walk on the surface of this earth as a sister, as, 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 as a sister known entity. You will dominate and have dominion. You shall be celebrated everywhere you tread upon on this earth. 
your children will be celebrated. Your generations will be celebrated. Your descendants shall be in everlasting remembrance, according to Psalm 112, in the name of Jesus Christ. The zero will become hero in this nation. Surrender to Jesus. Make him your Lord and your Savior. Make him your Lord and your Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody looked at me and he said, don't you know how many years it took for your mother to give birth to you? I said, eh, tell me the story then. And the person said, even after she gave birth to you, do you know how many years it took for her to have another child? At least you know that one. Is it not 18 years? I said, yes. Well, so your own waiting has started. Has just started. And my wife and I couldn't have a child for almost 10 years. We ran everywhere, treatments everywhere and all that. The more treatment we got, the worse we became. We traveled to England for medical treatment. We didn't go to England to start a church. We went to England for fertility treatment. I left my legal practice to go for fertility treatment with my wife. It was planned to be a one month or so journey. <laughs> ah, glory be to God. For one and a half years, doctors in England couldn't find solution until they closed our file. Professor Savas, one of the best gynecology, of, uh, gynecology clinic in England, was our, was our consultant. After one and a half years of treatment, all manners of VF, OVF, IVF, I, just name it. Professor Savas called my wife and I to his office and said, sorry, we are closing your file. There is nothing else we can do for you. But we will keep your detail in our system. If there is development in fertility treatment in future, we will invite you. They gave us our file and we got home. But glory be to God. There is a way your problem can push you to your destiny. And your problem turns to promotion. The devil meant it for evil. But he did not know. He didn't know. He didn't know that by pushing us to England, he was pushing us to our destiny. I regret. Every battle battling you will regret. The Bible says, if they had known, if they had known, they would not have crucified. The Lord of hosts. We got home with the fire that was close. But by this time, we have known Dr. Jesus. We lifted up the fire to Dr. Jesus and said, Dr. Jesus, Dr. Savas had closed our fire. We hand it over to you. Over to you. And we continue to serve God. Want to break limitation in your life? Serve God like never before. Love God like never before. We, go, we went on and we were serving God. Are serving God. It didn't happen immediately. It didn't happen immediately. File was closed in 1997. January 1998. My wife was rushed to the hospital. She was bleeding profusely. My wife was crying and weeping. She looked at me in the face and said, my darling, when will this affliction, when will it stop? I said, it will, when will it end? Was what she said. I said from only anger within me, I said to my wife, I said, my wife, it will end this year. Yes, I didn't know. I, just, I was just angry. January, we were fasting and praying in church. And the devil there attacked my wife again. It was enough that there was no child. Why do you want her to bleed to death for God's sake? I told her, I said, it will end this year. January 1998. By March or so, my wife had conceived. No, no, by August 1998. August 1998, my wife conceived. About three months after conception, we went to Dr. Savas. Book appointment and we went to see him. Dr. Savas looked at us and said, what have you come to do? We told you that if there is development in medicine in future, we will invite you. I could see that you book an appointment to see me. Professor Savas said, what have you come to do? Uh, we said, yeah, we just want you to check us out. We have a feeling that something might be going on. Uh, you mean she's pregnant? We said, well, we suspect. No, we've done home tests. So they checked my wife out. I said, ah, and this woman is 12 weeks pregnant. <laughs> Pastor Sava said to my wife, and said, who have you been seeing? <laughs> he wanted to know the doctor that beat him in the game in UK. He said, who have you been seeing? And as if my wife and I re-asked the question from home, together at the same time we look up, 
we say we've been seeing Dr. Jesus. He was a Muslim. He still thought that it was a joke. He thought Dr. Jesus must be another doctor in another part of London. He said, talk to me about Dr. Jesus. Who is he? Where is he? Where is his practice? Where is his practice? I said, his practice is in the heavens of heavens. He dwelleth in eternity. But he moved his clinic down to our apartment. There he treated us. I said, no, I'm not joking here. Don't joke with me. What's going on? I saw an opportunity to win a big fish. Catch a big fish for my Jesus. By the time we finished talking to him about Dr. Jesus, he said that Dr. Jesus must be the real doctor. I think I want to meet him. He said, we can, you can meet him right here. Professor Sabas gave his life to Christ in his clinic there. In his clinic there. In his clinic. May 22, 1999, our firstborn was born. The walls of limitation, the cause of limitation placed over me years ago was broken finally. Finally, 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 finally. Done it finally. Finally. Rise up on your feet. The Lord I, I can't preach anymore. Finally, I can't preach finally, anymore. Finally, finally. Hey, well, the Lord has done it finally. Finally, finally, the Lord has done it. Finally. My sister, I'm a coffin, I'm a the Lord has done it. Finally, 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 the Lord has done it. Oh, finally, finally, I don't know about you. The Lord has done it. For somebody here today, Jesus that's your song. That's your song.
by the reason of the anointing every yoke of limitation place upon my family place upon my destiny today be destroyed in the name of Jesus prayer pray 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 finally it must be done today 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 every yoke of limitation by the reason of the anointing Malike Doria Bakasataya, Ento Lombe Lige de Lebosh, Et Rosette Libra Niketea, Aya, 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 Lege Rumo Koto Libra Gadea, Ah, Zaka Baribo Kotoya, by the reason of the anointing, every spirit of limitation, every yoke of limitation upon me, upon my destiny, upon my family, upon everyone under the sound of my voice, let that yoke be destroyed. Let our yoke be destroyed. Let our yoke be destroyed. Let our yoke be destroyed. Zagodo belike deya. E prokoto. E ndolo brege sekete. E kuka pali brege deya. In Jesus name. We pray. Say arrows of limitation. Fire at my star. Arrows of limitation. Fire at my star. Backfire. Return to your sender now. In the name of Jesus, prayer. Pray, 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 pray. Ah, I will pray, I will pray, I will pray, I will pray. If I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. Oh, I will pray. Oh, I will pray. If I don't pray. Satan will make a prey of me. If you don't be a rewind, you can become a peer rewind. Pray, 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 pray. I will pray. I will pray. Oh, if I don't pray, Satan will make a prey of me. Oh, I will pray. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I will fast. I will fast. If I don't fast. Satan will play a fast one on me. Oh, I will fast and pray. I will pray. Oh, Yakabala Borobo Kotoya, Endobo Zontoli Bregadea, Okabala Bragade, Endobole Mandaya, Arukatanaba, Epreket and Telebrogodoya, Ekelebo Shantaya, Atuka Dabi Legadea, Etrono Zontolia Baraba, Ekeleboromo Koto. In Jesus' name, we pray. So every voice of limitation ringing in my ears, every voice of limitation spoken against my destiny or the destiny of my family members, right now, I silence that voice. I kill that voice forever. In the name of Jesus, prayer. Yatopala bali gede, eko de boromo kotoya, nazuka bali brene kete ya, endo boromo boromo kotoya, eduka bala braga de, ezuka labare mo kotoya, ende lebos le broko tondo le brega de, eduka bala braga de, ezuka re mo kotoya, endo bolo brega de ya. Let you capara bregadea, the cuca pala bragadea, Rema Cotonia Bagaza de Leboroboto. In Jesus' name, we pray. Pray this one more prayer. Proverbs 10 28. The hope of the righteous will be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. Say in the name of Jesus, every expectation of the wicked concerning my destiny, every expectation of sickness. Expectation of diseases, expectation of barrenness, expectation of failure, expectation of poverty, expectation of sudden death, expectation of limitation, every wicked expectation over my life. Perish, perish, perish in the name of Jesus. Prayer. Ya katana bragade, reketole brogodoya, 
Mangana Mosha, Embono Mosoto, Enduria Varaskata, Etoke Telebo, Eduria Varaskate, Yetoke Telebo, Eduri Bakasanta, Atuka Balikede, Ekurime Kete, Leboroboko Santo Yabagade, Rakutana Bragade, Eku Kabala Bragade, Ekuremo Koshata, Endolo Bregade. Le sutabali bragade et tout la brangade et suria varaskete ya le tore bokotoli bregade et kukabala bragade in Jesus name we pray Set for your hands towards the altar with amen that roars like thunder i pray for you today the expectation of poverty over your life over your generational tree that expectation will perish you will prosper and flourish beyond and above every expectation in the name of jesus the expectation of sickness over your life and the lives of your family members will perish you will live in divine health in flourishing health in perfect health you and your children and your children's children's children in the name of jesus that expectation of failure and non-achievement and stagnancy i command that expectation to perish you will succeed you will have dominion you will go forward you will go upward in the name of jesus you will break through you will not break down in the race of life you will make it in the name of jesus isaac went forward you will go forward isaac grew you will grow beyond expectation isaac was great you will was great beyond expectation isaac became very prosperous very great you become very prosperous above expectation beyond expectation in the name of jesus every expectation of barrenness over your life over your career over your business over your marriages those expectations shall perish you will be fruitful you'll be fruitful in the land god makes room for you enter your real board walk inside your real board sit in your real board occupy your real board dominate your real board you will be fruitful god has made room for you all over the world occupy until he comes occupy until he comes occupy until he comes in the name of jesus every expectation of ancestral and generational causes over you and your family tree those expectations are cut off now they will perish you will be blessed you will be a blessing all over the nations of the world by your name nations will be blessed families will be blessed in the name of jesus the expectation of limitation over you embargo of limitation barrier of limitation <laughs> cage of limitation Port of limitation. In the brain, get the get the level kotoya. A black cauldron of limitation over your destiny. Those expectations perish by fire. 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 Let them perish by fire. You will live and not die. Your men will not be few. Men will not be few in your family. Women will not be few in your family. Fruitful women will not be few in your family. Blessed men will not be few in your family. No barrenness in your family. Never again you will live. You will fulfill destiny. You will live long. You will live long. You will live eternal life. Expectations above, beyond. That will be your portion. You will exceed your ancestors. You will go further and further than your fathers live above live beyond all expectation the name of god the father the name of god the son the name of god the holy spirit in jesus 
much less name we have prayed put your hands together for jesus if you believe you can go back to your seat now yes oh. yes thank you yahweh the way of israel we thank you eternity of israel we thank you yes yes Lord. yes Say to your neighbor, no more limits. I know it. I sense it. I feel it. Never again will I suffer limitation. In Jesus' name. Beloved, even after today, don't stop praying like Jabez. Jabez prayed until limitation was broken. Beloved, Live a holy and righteous life. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. It's not everyone that will flourish. It's the righteous. Live a holy life. Love what God loves. Hate what he hates. Have a positive attitude to life. Be addicted to serving God. Be addicted to giving. To generosity. Isaac sowed in the land where there was famine. And every limitation that Gerar placed on everyone else. Oh, there is famine, you can't sow and prosper. Oh, there is famine, you can't break through. Oh, there has been no rain, no fruit will germinate. But Isaac went ahead and sowed. And the Bible says in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold. Be generous. Be addicted to giving. Don't fall for the lie and falsehood of satan the bible says generosity brings prosperity read your bible very well proverbs 11 24 to 25 generosity brings prosperity from the passion translation withholding from charity brings poverty those who live to bless others we have blessings heaped upon them and the one who pours out his life to pour out blessings will be saturated with favor may god saturate you with favor in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to go into the anointing service now. But before we do that, let me put a caveat and take care of that quickly so that everyone will record it that I gave that opportunity. You see, there's a way the anointing works. When Prophet Samuel came to the house of Jesus to anoint one of the children as king, he saw the firstborn, he thought it was the right one. Second to the seventh, he thought they were the right one. God said, no. I rejected all of them. But there is one. I've checked out his heart. God does not look at the appearance, he's looking at the heart. He's the one whose head will carry the oil. And David, the man after God's heart, showed up. And the oil located his head. The first condition I gave us to break limitation is that surrender your life to Jesus Christ. I wasn't born a Christian. I wasn't born a born again. I was born into a Muslim family. Very ardent, radical Muslim family in Yoruba land for that matter. My great-great-grandfather brought Islam to our hometown. I grew up as a Muslim. In fact, I was against all Christians in the university. I used to persecute the Christians. I was like Saul of Tarsus. <laughs> uh, when I go to preach in some places, one or two people will come up and meet me and say, ah, are you the same Lake Sanusi? Mr. Speaker at the University of Ife, are you the same one? No, I will tell them that one died. I'm the new one. Because when a, when a man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Until I said yes to Jesus, Satan was having a laugh at me. So before we anoint with oil, are you here?
this afternoon you are not born again or you can't remember the day that you acknowledge Jesus as your Lord and Savior even publicly or you are here today you've backslid the things you say you won't do you've returned to them not really your fault it's the enemy that's the plan of the enemy but God brought you here today because he loves you so much and he wants you to rededicate your life to him surrender to him completely let him become your Lord and your Savior let him have full charge of your destiny so that you can hand over your file to him and he can treat your case the way the professor servers of this world cannot treat that case are you here this afternoon I want to pray for you first before I anoint with oil if you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to him I want everyone to please just for a minute bow down your heads be talking to the Lord pray there is a prayer point you can pray for yourself even now if you want to give your life to Jesus or rededicate your life to him please raise up your right hand I want to pray for you anyone here raise up your right hand Jesus Christ said if only one person should repent and return to me Jesus said I will be dancing before the angels that is to say that's how precious you are to him if you are the only one in this world Christ will still have died that's what it means oh what a loving God we have thank you Jesus thank you my brothers thank you my sisters you are not doing it for Lake Sanusi Lake Sanusi cannot save a rat only Jesus I'm telling you what is happening to you now God is the one speaking to you you are just hearing the voice of a man no 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 because Jesus Christ said except the son draws to the father no one can come to the father I can assure you that is the Lord Jesus that is ministering to you thank you my father thank you king of glory let me pray for you just rise on your feet where you are you don't need to come forward rise on your feet I will pray for you I want to pray for you where you are just I want to pray for you my father and my God I want to thank you for this your children if anyone wants to join please just rise on your feet right now you want to surrender your life rededicate your life to Jesus a brand new beginning you want to have the kind of beginning that I had with Christ why am I praying the way I'm praying why am I excited the way I am I have tasted Jesus I have seen the other side I've seen the occult what it looks like I've seen it I was in government a bachelor's government I knew what all it was but it amounted to nothing there's a way that seems right to man but the end of it is destruction brethren the only way the right way is the way of Christ that's the way I'm introducing to you father thank you for this your sons and your daughters it is you oh God that has revealed yourself to them I pray, O oh God Almighty, that you forgive their sins. Every fire that the enemy may have over them concerning their destiny right now, let the blood of Jesus blot out the content of the fire. I pray, O oh God Almighty, that they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. I ask my Father and my God that you write their names in the book of life. From today, anoint them with the oil of gladness, far and above their contemporaries, and begin to use them mightily, mightily for your glory. A life that is far above and beyond expectations. Launch them into that divine life. Launch them into that gateway of eternal life. And everyone that is already saved, I pray that your grace keep us saved. That we will not return to our vomit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the anointing service? Is there anything we want to do before the anointing service? Have we taken our tithes and our offerings? Okay. May I ask that we take our tithes and our offerings now and then we can go straight to the anointing service so that after the anointing service, uh, one or two things we'll do. I will pray for us after you have been anointed with oil and then we will be on our way have you been blessed so far okay thank you 20 people that said yes i will hear your testimonies before the end of this year in the name of jesus christ amen for every miracle that you are asking for god will double in the name of jesus i asked for at least one child god gave us two sons <laughs> The first son came after about 10 years of barrenness. After that, my wife lost two fallopian tubes. 
And God said, don't worry, son. I want to prove to those who didn't believe the first miracle that I did it. Six months after she lost two fallopian tubes, she conceived. And women, doctors know what it means. We don't have fallopian tubes. And give birth to our second son. Our first son is 25 years old. He's a pastor. He got married at the age of 23. He's married. Finished master's degree at Oral Roberts University. He pastors a church that is called Alive Church in London. You can see it on YouTube because that is his destiny. When I was praying, I said, Lord, give me a child like Samuel. And we'll give him to you. So his middle name is Samuel. So he's working in his destiny. Why am I saying this? Your problem is turning to promotion. I will not be standing before you preaching if the devil did not attack me with barrenness. The devil will regret troubling your destiny in the name of Jesus. Our second boy is still missing. He's an actor. <laughs> the father of a pastor and an actor. He's an actor, 21 years old, going to 22. And we give thanks to God. It's God himself that raised them because they are children of waiting. Your waiting is not a wasting. God will compensate you in the name of Jesus. I want us to prepare our tithes and our offerings now. God loves a cheerful giver. And I want to invite, this is the 10th month. I want to invite 10 people to join me. I will be the 11th. Because by the 11th month, the Almighty God will make the ears of our pastor to hear the testimonies of every one of us here. In the name of Jesus. Because of what he has settled at this four-day conference. So I want to invite 10 people to do beyond, up to do above and beyond with me. I'll be the 11th. 10 people will join me to sow a seed of $500. Come to the altar to join me. I'm sowing mine. Can I have my bag, please? 10 people can join me to do that. It's not for me, oh. Hey, I perceive there's a fertile ground in the house of God. And I want to sow into a fertile ground. If you believe in seed sowing, you can come. Please, if you don't believe, don't come. I want at least 10 people to join me. And every sower of seed has a vest in mind. As you come forward, I want you to talk to God about what you want to harvest. What harvest are you looking at? What harvest are you looking at? We were building our auditorium in London some years ago. And some of us, to buy the property, we bought our property by the grace of God for 3.5 million pounds. And we, we renovated and decorated the property for 1 million pounds. Some of us remortgaged our houses at that time and sold into the project. None of us is regretting today, by the way. I remember we got to a point and we were in need of more money. I was in America at that time. At that time, I was saving money. I wanted to buy a car to send to Nigeria so that any time I went to Nigeria, I would not have to borrow cars from my friends. So I've, I've, I've saved up to 50, about seventeen or $18,000 at that time. I wanted to buy a car worth $35,000. And there was need for money back home in London on the building project. And the Lord said to me, what about that money that you are saving? I said, get thee behind me, Satan. And God said, I'm not Satan. I'm the one talking. I said, but I've already remortgaged my house. What else do I need to do? God said, that one that is there, but the Lord had need of it. I obeyed the Lord empty that account and send the money into the project. A liar will not go to heaven, as you know. Three months after, I got a call 
from a brother in one of the states here in America who apparently God bless him and his wife through our administration like this. They had my testimony. We prayed for them. God gave them the fruit of the womb. The brother called me three months after this incident. Of course, I've never discussed with him in three years. He said, Pastor Leke, have you ever thought of having a car in Nigeria? Ah! I said, who told you? He said, nobody told me. I just felt that I know you go to Nigeria often, but I'm not sure if you have a car there. Oh, I said, I'm believing God for one. I said, what kind of car are you believing God for? I told him exactly what I wanted. And he told me, consider it done. He said, consider it done. A month after he called me, he said, which address would you like it to be delivered at? I gave him the address in, in, in Lagos. He said it to be there. About three months after, the car arrived there. I did not have to pay a dime. God cannot hold anyone. Who. I'm telling you the truth. This God that we serve. And some of you who are believing the lies of some people who said that our daddy in the Lord that uh, asked for forgiveness, that, uh, you know, uh, should not pay tax. You know, people have a way of choose, take picking and choose what they like. They've taken it as if daddy said people shouldn't pay tight. I hope you go and listen to the rejoinder that daddy made at the last Holy Ghost night. That he didn't say you shouldn't pay your title. What he said is that he, 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 he asked for food that, that he said non titles will not go to heaven. He said Bible didn't say that. But he did not say you should not pay your tight. What he said is that as a matter of fact, tight is 10%. That if after 15, 20 years of Christianity, you are still at 10%. <laughs> you need to step up. That's what the man of God is saying. So let's not misquote him. In any case, let there be no argument about tight or no tight. Whatever is in your heart, you do it. Even if you don't believe in giving at all, please don't give. Is anyone who wants to join us to sow a seed? If it's not $500, you want to sow a seed? Whatever God lays on your heart as a seed, over and above the offering that you are giving, I'd like you to also rise up and join us. Whatever you are believing God for, ask for it. I'm not saying we can bribe God. No, 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 no. Isaac sowed in the land. We know what happened. The widow of Zerapath surrendered at last meal. We know what happened. The Shunammite woman supported the, king, the, the ministry of Elisha. We know what happened. What money could not buy, God gave. David said, may I not give unto God that which will not cost me anything. Let your going beyond and above cost you something. My Father and my God, I pray over the finances of your children. I pray concerning all your sons and daughters that are sowing even seeds. The Bible says in Psalm number 20, you said in your word that the name of the God of Jacob will defend you. You said he will send you help out of the sanctuary. You said he will strengthen you out of Zion. You said he will remember all your offerings. He will take note of your bond sacrifice. Your children have given offerings. Tithes, remember their offerings. Some have even made what I call bond sacrifices by giving and sowing seeds. Please take notice of these sacrifices. You said in Psalm 24 that you said he will grant all your petitions. Please, at this prayer meeting, grant all the petitions of your people. You said he will fulfill all your desires. Please, all the art desires of your children, fulfill their desires. Let their desires be acquired. And let our ears hear each other's testimonies. No more limit concerning financial breakthroughs here. No more limit concerning abundance in the home of your children. I decree and demand that money meets money in your hands. That provision meet provisions in your home. That in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, destiny airpass will locate you from wherever they are. Where you ought to be remembered for good, you will never be forgotten. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to become debt free. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural debt cancellation, supernatural debt forgiveness. Locate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Maria de Liaboko Santa. They start project in your family, they don't finish it. That will not be your portion. In the name of Jesus. In this nation, you will build houses. You will inhabit them. 
you will not plant for another to reap. You will not build for another to inhabit. You will reap the reward of your hard labor. Your labor will be flavored by favor. Your hard work will be flavored by favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Nitoroje. You will not borrow. Instead, you will lend unto nations. When you begin to have investments in banks, that's when you become a lender to nations. Because those banks, they will need your investments to trade. You will lend to nations in the name of Jesus Christ. Generational poverty be forgotten forever in your life. You will leave inheritance for children's children. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done. 